Hello, I'm Vivian McGrath from beingunbeatable.com and in this video I'm going to be talking about breaking up with a narcissist. Why I just can't. I get emails to my inbox and comments on my blog at beingunbeatable.com every single day and their messages predominantly from women, I do have some men, but predominantly from women saying things like, I suffer verbal abuse every single day, gaslighting and all of the manipulative tactics that narcissists use. I have others who say they suffer physical violence. I had one woman who was encouraged to get pregnant by her partner, but then forced to have an abortion and he refused to support her through it. I hear really harrowing stories of abuse and all of them say the same thing to me. I know I should leave, I want to, but I just can't. And when they write to me, they use language that's very, very similar and it says a lot to me about their situation, in fact more about their situation than what they're actually trying to say to me. And I thought it would be really worth reading out some of these and deciphering their language to explain to all of you what's happening, why they're absolutely, I have no doubt, still being brainwashed and manipulated by the narcissist they're in a relationship with, and how you can change your language, not listen to that, and really uh, turn your, start to turn your life around. So, I'll read out a few of them here. I still struggle with forgiveness and cannot bring myself to give him another chance. Ultimately, I don't think I like him as much anymore. But I feel terrible admitting these things and so guilty for choosing now to leave when he is starting to potentially make progress. Another one, I feel sorry for him when he cries all the time. I feel guilty for being angry with him. I feel guilty for emotionally withdrawing and not behaving like a proper girlfriend. I feel guilty for not standing by and supporting him when he's made the decision to change his ways. I have so much hurt and anger towards him. I don't know whether to trust his promises to change. He can be very manipulative, but I feel guilty for not giving him more credit if he means it, should I be giving him a second chance? And the last one, he assured me that all behaviour would stop now he's addressed the underlying issues. He now feels I'm the one who's stopping us getting back together and fixing things and he's probably right. Wow. This is telling me so much. Firstly, it's telling me that these, these were all women, so these women are saying my emotions and needs come second to that of the narcissist. There's a lot of guilt here. They feel guilty, particularly when they're starting to consider leaving the narcissist and especially when the narcissist is telling them and promising them they're going to change. Now, what I'm hearing here as well is there's a lot of guilt, but also if you listen to their words, especially the woman who uses inverted commas, the narcissist is still manipulating. It's not, it's not their language, it's the narcissist's words. So things like, I feel guilty for not behaving like a proper girlfriend. I'm not supporting him when he needs me most. Well, I can bet you $1 million that is what the narcissist that that woman who is in a relationship with is telling her. Well, now I'm going to change. Why aren't you supporting me? Why aren't you being a nice girlfriend? You know, but all that's doing is taking the, the focus away from the fact that he was abusive and he's the one who needs to change and get help and support and putting it, the blame onto her. Well, you're not being supportive now. You're not being a proper girlfriend. And, and just shifting the attention away from him and shifting the blame. And she's listening to it because she's using his words in her email to me. Another one, shouldn't I be giving him more credit? 
because he's now trying to mend his ways. Well, again, what the narcissist is saying here, I said I'm going to change, isn't that enough? You know, and what I would say to that is, where's the evidence? You know, within five minutes of them saying I'm going to change, they're already shifting the blame and the responsibility for fixing the relationship on to the woman. And in my opinion, he has no intention to change at all. While he's doing that, he is not actually going and doing the psychological support that you need to do if you are really going to change your ways from being an abusive person to someone who has recovered. You know, there's no evidence of that at all. All I'm seeing is they're promising to change and because their girlfriend or, or partner is still feeling like leaving and not wanting to give them a second chance and feeling angry um, a, a, about the abuse, well, they're just saying, well, that's not good enough. You're not being a nice enough girlfriend. You're not supporting me. It's all about me, 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 me. My feelings come first. Yours don't matter. So these women are not allowed to feel angry. They're not allowed to feel emotions. They're not allowed to feel doubt. They're not allowed to feel skepticism over these promises to change. And instead, they're being manipulated to, to still take the blame and to still feel guilt. Now, I would just say you have no right to, no need to feel guilty. You've been there supporting them. You've been going back to them after abuse. You have every right to feel angry. It's better than suppressing your emotions and denying they exist. Feel angry. You have a right to feel angry over abuse. You have a right to make the choice of whether you leave them or not, whether they're getting help or not. You're not responsible for them. They are responsible for their own behaviour. And whether they get help or not is their choice. And whether you decide to leave them, over and above whether they get help or not, that is also your right and choice to make. So don't feel guilty. Feel angry. You have every right to. And if what I'm hearing in these emails is your gut instincts are telling you you should leave and you want to leave, then please listen to them and stop listening to this gaslighting and this shifting the blame onto you. Here are some more comments that I get. I feel I'm just as bad as he is. I never hit him. I never called him names or yelled. But am I psychologically abusive, controlling, delusional, emotionally abusive like he said I was? I'm not perfect. I know I push him too far. And another one. I feel like I'm such a bitch because I get jealous, insecure. I'd snoop sometimes. Now, again, what I'm hearing here is gaslighting. You know, these words that narcissists use are very common. You're delusional. You're, you're emotionally abusing me, you know. What they love to do is they love to um, not only gaslight you by saying when you question any of their abuse, that didn't happen, you're delusional. They, they just pretend it didn't happen, they're minimising their abuse, using those words that you're delusional, you're making it up, it didn't happen. That's gaslighting. That's what I'm hearing in these emails. The other thing is, they're saying, uh, you're psychologically abusive, you're the one who's emotionally abusive, it's not me. And often what they do is they'll bring another person into the equation, like one of them in the emails to me said their mother you know, they discuss me with their mother and even she agrees that I'm the crazy, emotionally abusive one. You know, this is very common, triangulation, minimising the abuse. And also, um, just making you doubt yourself and think, well, maybe I am the crazy one. Because they absolutely, especially if you're going to leave them, 
they have to make out that they actually are the victims and it is you who is the abusive one. So, you know, don't doubt yourself. The other thing I would say actually, to just be a caveat to that, is when you are in these abusive relationships with narcissists, the manipulation is so great and it's designed to throw you off balance. It's designed to make you walk on eggshells. It's designed to confuse you, make you doubt yourself, question yourself. Because the more off balance you are and confused you are, the more you, you need them, the more they can control you. So this sort of um, making out that they're the victim, you're the crazy one and you're, you're abusing them and all that, it's all designed to just control you, make you doubt yourself. But... You know, when you're in an abusive relationship like this for, for a long time, you can become a little crazy. I thought I was going crazy. I turned into somebody I don't even recognize now. I did that as well. I started snooping. I started to feel insecure. I started to check up on him, you know. Narcissists, and when you're in a relationship that's based on manipulation and lies... You can go crazy. You can start to become someone who you're not. Someone who's jealous and has never been before. So forgive yourself for that behavior. It's not necessarily you. Don't blame yourself. And you can get yourself back. Just remove yourself from that toxic manipulation. Here are some more comments. When I try to leave, the nice side comes back and I feel awful again that I'm thinking of leaving this emotionally damaged man who wants to love me properly and he just doesn't know how. Another one. I just want to be there for him, to love him and for him to know he's not alone and I see him beneath the bad guy. I don't know what to do. I'm actually addicted and the scary thing is I don't want to get away from him. I feel as though I love him too much. We've been through so much together. I can't throw that away when he needs love and support the most right now. I did everything I can to assure him I love him, yet he treats me so badly. I feel as though this isn't him. Now what all of these are saying to me is that these women are seeing the narcissist as having two sides. That's the first thing. The reason we stay so long in these abusive relationships is we convince ourselves that they've got this nice side. And then there's this other, the damaged, darker, abusive side. And we feel sorry for them because we know that isn't the real them. They don't mean their behavior. They want to love us. They just don't know how, as she says. And so we forgive them all of the abuse because when we get the nice side back, the Dr. Jekyll, as I, as I call it. We forgive Mr. or Miss Hyde anything because we don't think that they're accountable for both. Well, that's a lie. The narcissist con us into believing that they've got these two sides and they're not accountable for the actions of both, particularly the actions of the abusive side. They are, and... We are not responsible for that. But what we do is by forgiving them, we are saying to them, I'm not holding you accountable for that. It's okay for you to be abusive. I know that's not the real you. And I'll stay with you because you need me to um, bring that loving, the real you back and heal that damaged side of you. Secondly, what this is telling me, that's a lie, by the way. And if you wait and hope for them to change, if you bend yourself backwards, trying to love them more, trying to prove them you're a proper girlfriend, trying to do all that you can, nothing's going to work. You cannot change them. I know I say this over and over again, but you cannot change them. The second thing I will say that what these women are telling me is they have a need to be needed. They feel the need to rescue the narcissist. He needs me, especially now he needs me more than ever. And it's like, well, 
Why do you think it's your duty to save them? Why do you need to rescue them? They are an adult. They're responsible for their own behavior. They're responsible for their own actions. It is not up to you to rescue them. You can't. What you are trying to do is deny the fact that it's you that needs saving. Because while you have someone that you feel is more damaged, that needs you to rescue them, needs you to save them, you can ignore the fact that actually it's you who has a low sense of self-worth and a low sense of self-esteem. If you didn't, you wouldn't allow a man, you wouldn't stay with a man or woman who abuses you, you wouldn't keep going back to someone who hurts you. Only when we have a low sense of self-worth do we stay with people who treat us as worthless. So, I would do two things, except that they do not have two sides. You can be waiting forever for that nice side to come back. Ask yourself, what if they never change? What if this nasty side is all I'm going to get? Is that good enough for you? And also, be really honest with yourself when you ask yourself, what is it I'm trying to hide from? What is it I'm running away from? What is that pain, that inner void, that hurt, that fear of abandonment I have that makes me want to suppress all my emotions, deny all my needs, and instead put all my energy on to someone who abuses me? It's a tough question, I know, but until you ask yourself that question, you're never going to heal. The final uh, comments I'll read to you are very short, that tell me they're trapped. I hate him, but I'm stuck. My self-worth and esteem is br being brutally abused. I can't believe what's happening. Things are escalating. I'm trying to figure out what to do with my life, but no answer feels good to me. I honestly spend every single day trying to figure out what to do. You're not trapped. I know at the moment it feels like every option is painful. I've been there, it hurts. If I leave them, it's gonna hurt. I can't bear the thought of it, that kills me. If I stay with them, it hurts because the abuse will escalate, I promise. So what choice do you have? Stay with abuse that's going to get worse and that hurt, or leave? and face the fear of what if I never see them again? What if um, I feel guilty about leaving them when they need me most? Which is worse? Well, I would say to you, it's short-term pain for long-term gain, and leaving them is the only option. It's hard, but you know, that pain is not going to last, and it's better to feel that pain. Be alive again. Feel the pain. Feel the anger that you should feel about being abused. Feel the, the sadness for the fact that you've been abused for, for so long, and that little girl inside is frightened. Feel that, and nurture that little inner child, and say, it's okay. It's better than repressing feelings, allowing a person to abuse your emotions, walk all over you. It's as simple as admitting you need help and then taking that first step. If you are in a relationship and you feel you need to leave, like these women who are writing to me, and you know in your gut that is the right decision, but you just feel like you can't and you're trapped, pick up the phone, get help and support. You can't do this alone, but that's all it takes. That's what I did. And once you've taken that step to get help and support, then you can take the next one and the next one. So thank you so much for all your letters and emails and comments. I'm just, I'm so blown away that you write to me every day they're just pouring into me and I love that you trust me um, with your stories 
and that I can give you my advice and support based on the fact that I've been there, I know what you're feeling and I know, I can tell you, it really hurts right now, I know, and you feel like you're trapped and you're in a dark tunnel, but you do have a choice. The choice is yours and all you need to do is take it, take that first step. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for writing to me. Um, please send me your questions. I will happily answer them as many as I can. And if you like this video, please like it, share it with anyone who you think it might help. And I'll see you in the next video. And please subscribe to my blog, www.beingunbeatable.com. See you next time.